Jump Fest 2016 is upon us, and from that event, we got a brand new Kingdom Hearts 2.8 as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer, in which I have to say these trailers are absolutely fantastic. Today for you guys, I'm going to be showing you guys all of the kind of hidden little secrets and little tidbits that I deciphered out of the brand new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. I will eventually get around to talking about the new 2.8 trailer, but for today, here is my analysis on Kingdom Hearts 3. If I did miss out any little kind of details, be sure to list them in the comments section below, and I'm sure I'll get around to making an extra video for anything that I did, of course, miss out. But otherwise guys, hope you enjoy this video and let's dive into it. The trailer starts off with Sora walking into a familiar world and that is of course Rapunzel's world which is the Kingdom of Corona. Now this walking sequence is a slightly extended version of the one that we saw during the E3 2015 trailer, but however we actually have seen the extended version of this scene right here with Sora walking into the world. It was actually shown during um, Square Enix's kind of presentation talking about Kingdom Kingdom Hearts 3 in its new trailer during E3. This extended footage was actually displayed and shown, but I just, you know, kind of suppose like now they decided, all right, we're just going to chuck it into this new trailer for Jump Festa. The trailer then cuts into a familiar area by the stream. This is the same area as we are in in E3 during that trailer. We first of all see Sora use fire and then he quickly transitions into arrow. We can see Sora do a small dodge roll towards the big dandelion heartless and then attack. Sora then strings together a combo that eventually sends the small heartless flying into the air and at the end of that combo he uses arrow as a sort of finisher. Is it possible that perhaps you can create your own combos within a certain menu by adding different magic commands or certain other commands towards the combo for like finishes or midway moves? It also looks like Arrow is useful against the bigger Dandelion Heartless as it sends its Dandelion Seeds off its head, which will stop the smaller Dandelion Heartless from spawning. During this part here, we see Sora activate what looks to be an Air Slide ability, which was an ability introduced in Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, and was also used in Kingdom Hearts Recoded and Birth by Sleep. Shortly after he finishes using Air Slide, he performs a Down Slash type of move, which looks to be pretty powerful. Unfortunately, we can't actually see how powerful this move is due to there being no HP bars for the Heartless, as well as that he doesn't actually even attack or land the move on a Heartless. Once Sora is finished, we can see him actually bump into Goofy. It's crazy, I know, but Square Enix actually went ahead and made an animation for bumping into party members. The attention to detail is very impressive so far, I just really can't believe that Square Enix would actually go to the trouble of making it so that Sora would flinch or kind of move slightly to the side when he bumps into one of his AI companions. The trailer then cuts to another scene, but this time we are very very close to Rapunzel's tower, I've actually never been this close or actually really seen the tower up close and personal. And you'll notice that the heads up display is actually now orange instead of blue. This is something that also happens in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, but instead of being orange, it usually turns red. Uh, the heads up display usually changes color when you are near enemies, which basically symbolizes danger. It's interesting that the heads up display stays blue in the previous scene. Maybe Square Enix just hadn't programmed the heads up display properly during that scene, who really knows. But of course you guys will notice that the heads up display will stay orange for the remainder of the different scenes throughout this trailer when Sora is engaging in combat. Once Sora runs past the tower, we then see five new enemies, and of course they are new nobodies. This is the first time we are seeing nobodies in Kingdom Hearts 3, and of course, well, that confirms that nobodies will be an enemy variant in Kingdom Hearts 3. These are the nobodies that were described during D23, and they closely resemble Marluxia, who used to be a part of the original Organization 13 before he was destroyed in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Is it possible that he'll be returning in Kingdom Hearts 3? Do these nobodies kind of prove his re-existence? Perhaps maybe Xehanort has taken him back or reincarnated him in some sort of shape or form. We can see that these nobodies sprinkle around a lot of cherry blossom petals. It is unclear whether these are for aesthetic purpose or not. It could be possible that they might actually act as a sort of debuff, perhaps slowly draining Sora's health over time, or maybe weakening him. Sora then performs a dash towards a rock, which then activates flow motion. It looks like it works similar to how Dream Drop Distance's flow motion works. 
Of course, this isn't new to us as flow motion has appeared in trailers before. What I do find interesting is, when Sora dashes through the air, you'll notice kind of a ripple effect appears slightly after he performs the dash. We are then taken to another scene and we are now in Mount Olympus. This is clearly a new area that we haven't seen before as we are now by a stream with multiple different waterfalls. Sora then activates what looks to be a shot lock command from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. This shot lock appears to lock onto enemies extremely fast, then Sora performs quick moves and dashes that goes from enemy to enemy. It's also nice to see the focus bar actually deplete. This means that this bar is used to perform shot lock commands. It appears that the enemies stay in place while this shot lock is being used. This shot lock is however very interesting because it's unlike a shot lock that we've actually ever seen before. Usually shot locks are commands where you will shoot a projectile actually out of your keyblade. But with this one, Sora actually propels himself towards the enemies. What is interesting is you guys will notice that whenever Sora comes in contact with an enemy, the word attack will appear. Does that mean that you have to press a certain button to perhaps continue the commands? And once you press all the buttons, you guys will probably notice that Sora does a massive spinning kind of claw attack at the very end. This means that you're going to need to press all of the buttons in succession to get the full effect of whatever shot lock command you are going to use. It's probably worth noting that each shot lock in Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to work differently, as we'll see another one later on at the end of this trailer. And of course, from the scene alone, it confirms that shot locks are going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's kind of a touchy subject because I know we already have a ton of different abilities and moves and of course commands that we can already activate in Kingdom Hearts 3. And I know that a lot of people sort of complain about shot locks being overpowered, especially from the kind of reception of Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. I only hope that Osaka have actually listened to the fans talking about shot locks from Birth by Sleep and slightly tone them down a tad bit. Because I'm gonna be honest with you guys, shot locks in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep pretty much make you invincible. One last thing I thought I'd mention about the whole shot lock thing is you'll probably notice that while Sora is busy up in the air trying to lock on to the enemies to of course activate the shot lock, you'll notice that the command panel actually changes and there's two different options and at the top it reads button. So it's kind of unclear as to what these two different options do, whether they'll activate kind of a different shot lock, um, whether it will activate a certain ability or do something in particular. It's unknown just because of the fact that it's in Japanese. So hopefully sometime soon we can get a translation. After that, Sora is engaging in normal combat. We can also see in the background that Donald shoots a fireball and it goes up into the air then comes back down, not hitting a single enemy. Great work, Donald. The air combos that Sora perform also look fantastic with all sorts of different variations. You can also slightly see 1P appear once Sora defeats the Heartless, which obviously indicates the amount of XP gained from killing that enemy. It looks like XP values might be less, similar to Kingdom Hearts 1 in comparison to large XP values from killing enemies in Kingdom Hearts 2. We then see Sora fall into the stream and the current of the water actually drags him away. This means that there will most likely be different environmental hazards and obstacles that we're actually going to have to look out for while making our way through certain worlds. The water detail is looking simply beautiful, and the overall detail of the world is looking a tad better than E3's footage. We can also see little water ripples following Sora while he's getting dragged down the stream, which is once again some great attention to detail. While Sora is getting dragged down the stream, we can see most of the Heartless following him. I ended up counting a total of 10 Heartless. I think it's safe to say that we should probably expect bigger battles in Kingdom Hearts 3 with a lot more Heartless to fight all at once due to, well, the stronger hardware that Square Enix is working with. Another detail is our first view at a chest while Sora is getting dragged down the stream. Yes, finally we get to see a treasure chest. Hooray. We are then taken to another scene and we are now in Twilight Town, a familiar place. We instantly see Sora perform a dash attack into the Soldier Heartless and then shortly afterwards, the Soldier performs his counter cartwheel attack that of course we've become used to from the previous Kingdom Hearts games. What is most interesting about this scene is the brand new flying elemental Heartless that are in the area. We see two different variants, a yellow thunder based one which looks like kind of an upgraded version of the yellow Oprah from the previous games, and a pink version that looks to be fire based. 
These are completely new Heartless that we've never seen before. When Sora attacks these Heartless, they activate a chain ring around them which looks to aggravate them. I would say that dealing more damage to these guys will probably cause them to perform a range of different attacks and moves. Lastly, we see one of the yellow ones use its ring like a chain whip to attack Sora, but Sora then guards to deflect the attack. From there, Sora uses his famous dodge roll to get out of the enemy heat, and we quickly see one of the large bodies perform a ground slam attack. One thing that I thought was interesting is if we just pause it at this scene right here, you guys will notice that the area that would kind of lead down to the sand lot in Twilight Town, it looks like nothing's there. And honestly, I kind of find that a little bit worrying, you know. By now, I, I sort of half would expect the whole of Twilight Town to kind of be like fully complete. But um, it appears that, you know, like in these trailers, Square Enix are constantly, you know, displaying Twilight Town in the exact same place. I mean, we've seen this place now for the, uh, for the third time, this exact area. So um, I thought that was interesting to note. It looks like a lot of the Twilight Town actually hasn't been developed so far. And I think that raises an important question. You know, how much of Kingdom Hearts 3 do you actually think has been developed so far? I thought that'd be kind of interesting to bring up. The trailer then once again switches to a new area. And this is of course Yen Sid's mysterious tower. We see Sora running towards the tower without his Keyblade summoned, which looks like a slightly altered running animation to his one in Kingdom Hearts 2. Sora, Donald, and Goofy's faces in the heads-up display change expressions, depending on whether you are in combat or not. We can see that when Sora is running towards the tower, their faces look passive, but when the Heartless spawn, their faces change to a more serious look. Sora then proceeds to activate an Attraction Flow ride, which is reminiscent of Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blaster from Disneyland. This is the scene that we saw a few days ago. The ride comes out of a white doorway, and Sora, Donald, and Goofy proceed to jump in it. This ride will allow us to move and shoot multiple enemies on screen all at once. It appears that these rides will also have scores, so depending on how many targets you hit, you'll end up having a greater score. You should also note that sometimes the word chance will appear over an enemy, which probably indicates the perfect time to shoot them, dealing more damage and providing you with a greater amount of score. Towards the end of the ride, we see a massive cannon shot activate, which most likely inflicts massive damage to all enemies in the area. While the ride is activated, this small blue bar slowly decreases, which is the gauge for the attraction flow rides. Once the ride has depleted, we can see the two new Heartless variants again, and a couple more of them are in the area for that matter. Here we can see Donald shooting a fireball, and on the ground we can see small fire particles. Square Enix explains that certain abilities and magic will affect the environment around you. Also for the first time ever, we're actually seeing the shortcut panel appear during gameplay. You guys should actually notice that during the different Kingdom Hearts 3 trailers that we have received in the past, um, you'll notice that Sora does perform uh, magic like uh, Blizzard, Arrow, and Fire most notably. But, you know, during that gameplay in those trailers, we don't actually see the game scroll down in the heads up display down to like magic to then select the magic attack. Or we don't actually see the game using the shortcut panel to then activate it. And I think that was just basically meaning that the heads up display isn't fully functional, but they're just using the magic to kind of showcase it during the trailers. But now finally, towards the end of this trailer, we actually get to see that during gameplay, there is a shortcut panel, but it kind of comes expected that, of course, the shortcut panel would be back in number three, but it's good to actually see it in use. There's four options right there, what those options are. I have no clue whatsoever. Most likely, Arrow is in there because we see that once they activate the shortcut panel, Sora then uses Arrow, so I'd say they would obviously use the shortcut. Um, to activate Arrow to then perform it in the trailer. Um, the shortcut panel is looking a little bit different though. You guys will notice to the right of the panel, there's arrows that point up and down, and then there's like three dots. To me, that kind of seems as if, well, maybe you can have like a whole bunch of things in your shortcut, so you can scroll down and down and down and down, pretty much adding like whatever you want. Of course, you guys should notice that uh, in Kingdom Hearts 1, you could only shortcut three things. In number two, you could shortcut four things. Maybe in Kingdom Hearts 3, you can shortcut a whole bunch of different 
things. Um, but that's just kind of my interpretation and speculation upon the little shortcut panel with those extra little icons added there on the side. The new Heartless look as if they're actually fairly fast, as when they have their rings activated, they dash around the area, causing all sorts of different abilities and attacks. We can see this one in the background performing a sort of chain spin attack. Finally, Sora then activates one last shot lock command, which appears to be different from the one we saw before. Sora locks onto about 10 enemies and then shoots magical bullets out of his keyblade that home in on the targets. This uses probably about a third of his shot lock gauge. Well guys, that is my in-depth analysis for the brand new Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. That's all the kind of little hidden secrets and little kind of tidbits that I deciphered out of the new trailer. I'm sure that there's probably a few more things lying around in there and over the coming kind of weeks or days, um, a lot more people kind of look at it and find out what those things are. But here are the majority, so hopefully you guys did enjoy. What do you think about this new trailer? Did you like it? Are you kind of disappointed? Are you happy with this amazing Christmas present that personally I think Square Enix has given us? Let me know in the comment section below and until next time guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.